gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. Heaven and earth were joined together in a paradise on earth, a garden called Eden. And in this garden, God walked and talked with man. They were in full communion with one another. Man had full access to God, and God had full interaction with man. Likewise, the communion that man enjoyed with God, he also enjoyed with all the other creatures in God's creation. He had fellowship, unity, harmony, and peace. God provided plants for all living things to eat, and they enjoyed living amongst each other without fear. There were no predators or prey. There was no death or decay. Imagine. Imagine this perfect communion between man and God and perfect harmony between man and beast. Perfect peace between the wolf and the lamb. Imagine. Imagine, I say, because that's all we can really do is imagine. After all, harmony within creation is something that we can only imagine. We have no earthly picture of such a place. Sure, we might like to speak of certain tropical vacation beaches as paradise, and everyone from Miss America contestants to presidential candidates might even talk about our desire for world peace. But ultimately, we know this is not a reality. This is something that we might hope for, but it is something that we have never seen. The animal kingdom indeed has predators and prey, hunters and hunted, and there is no harmony among them. There is no peace between man and beast, as we are at enmity with wild animals, and indeed we see numerous signs in our world that man is indeed at enmity with his fellow man, as well. Just in this last week, we have seen riots in the streets, largely still over race relations. We see the violence done in Wisconsin by a man who drove his vehicle through a crowd in a Christmas parade. And we hear just yesterday of yet another school shooting. And we know that man is at enmity with his fellow man. There is not peace, there is not harmony, but rather there is division and unrest. We are certainly far from Eden. Of course, all of this division and enmity is simply symptomatic of our enmity between us and God. We no longer walk with God the way that he wants us to. We no longer give attention to his words. And certainly, no doubt, we are far from Eden, far from what God gave us in that garden. The paradise that God created is closed off to us now, guarded by an angel with a flaming sword. And the thought of a new paradise, a new heaven and earth, is beyond our imagination. We might even say it is beyond hope. But we have something greater than hope. We have God's word, and his word is a word of prophecy. His word is a word that tells us of what is going to be, not what might be, not what could be, but what will be. As sure and certain as God's word as God is good, we have his word from the prophet Isaiah. This is from Isaiah chapter 11. God says, There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. 
the wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Indeed, because of the branch of Jesse, the hope of a new Eden is promised to us. Isaiah says, where the tame live with the wild, they are able to dwell with each other, unafraid, neither being prey nor predator. Paradise is restored, and we can once again be in harmony with one another. And most importantly, we can be in harmony with God. Yes, St. Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, The root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to rule the Gentiles. In him will the Gentiles hope. And then Paul goes on to say, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Yes, the branch from the stump of Jesse is none other than Jesse's descendant. Indeed, the son of David, Jesus Christ himself. The hope of a new Eden begins in that manger. The hope of a new heaven and a new earth lies in that bed of straw. The babe born in the stable of Bethlehem gives us the hope that we need. And hope, like the prophecies of God's word, does not disappoint. Isaiah says, a little child shall lead them. And indeed, he is referring to this little child, this infant who nurses at Mary's breast. This child will lead us into the Eden that we hope and long for, the hope that is promised and prophesied to us. And so, St. Paul continues, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus. In Jesus, the word hope truly means something. Oh, sure, we use the word hope very loosely. For us, hope is nothing more than wishful thinking or a strong desire. Children hope they might get a new BB gun for Christmas. We hope gas prices don't go over $4. We hope that this new variant of the COVID virus does not prove to be too dangerous or deadly. But this is not like the hope that the prophecies of God give us. With God's word comes a promise. When the Lord gives us hope, it is going to happen. When God gives us his word that we will live in a new Eden, in harmony and peace with one another, we simply anxiously wait for that day. And we pray, come Lord Jesus. For with his coming, the new Eden cannot be far behind. Sure, many things that we look at in this world look a lot like the signs that Jesus speaks about in the gospel. We see natural disaster, man-made disaster, wars and rumors of wars. We see things not going right. And yet, even in the midst of that, Jesus says, stand up straight, keep your heads high, for you have hope that does not disappoint. You have the hope of Jesus and his salvation. The opening stanza of our hymn says, What hope in Eden prophesied 
where tame live with the wild, where lamb and lion side by side, led by a little child. This Advent season, let us be led by the little child. Let us be led by the babe of Bethlehem. Let us be led by that infant in the manger as he leads us to the hope of a new Eden. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.